Happy Saturday, loves. So it was such a beautiful guided beach meditation this morning. The weather was absolutely perfect. We had 22 people come and it was, it felt very, it's interesting when I lead these things because people really, I can feel their sense of, you know, that sense of relief. Anyways, so um, if you're watching this as a replay, I'm going to give a couple of minutes for people to join. Hi, Suzanne. Oh, awesome. So I'm going to give us a couple minutes for people to pop in and join. I know that this morning it was a little bit last minute, <laughs> but I've had such a flood of comments and uh, topic suggestions. So if you can, type in the comments box if you're here, just saying hello so I know who's popping in. Um, I can see that people are coming in, but I can't see exactly who it is. So just saying hello. The topic is balancing work and free time as for today's Facebook Live. And I love this topic because I'm noticing more and more how much it's coming up for people that show up for the events. A lot of times when I jump on these complimentary coaching calls or discovery calls with them, it usually ends up being about self-care, balancing work and free time. So I'm so glad that I got that as a topic suggestion. Um, oh, Suzanne's asking, what are two top two tools that have shifted my life? Adding in, or not even adding in, doing a schedule, putting together a schedule, which is a big part of balancing work and free time. And I know it sounds a little silly and it sounds very simple, but it actually made the biggest impact and shifted for me because I noticed that I was always so busy, 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 busy. I'm so busy. I'm always doing things. I'm so busy. And I never put time aside for myself. So one of the tools I would recommend is when you have a calendar, scheduling time for yourself. And I know it sounds a little silly, but you'll, it gets to the point sometimes where we get so preoccupied in doing things that we forget ourselves. So putting in, even if it's just 30 minutes to an hour a week in your schedule, I used to do, um, how I started this was devoting one hour a week on a Wednesday, I would go to yoga. And the reason I used to pick Wednesdays was because that helped me really recharge my life. Um, actually, that's kind of like, that's another tool I could give you is I would suggest doing something on a Wednesday because it's the middle of the week. Usually by Wednesday, because, you know, Monday comes around, then Tuesday, and then Wednesday, you're kind of like, oh, I need a little bit of a boost or a recharge. Do something for yourself, whether it is going for a walk, whether it's listening to your favorite podcast, um, watching a funny movie or a documentary in the evening, uh, meditating, taking a bubble bath, going to a yoga class, doing something for yourself on a Wednesday, I noticed really helped me. Um, and then it kind of recharged me to get me through the rest of the week. So that's one tool. The second tool that has really shifted my life is having a morning routine. I know that some people say, oh my gosh, Danny, I don't want to really wake up any earlier than I need to. I was that person that always woke up with just enough time to get ready and go where I need to go rather than giving myself a little bit more time. And it started small. I always start small with everything. Start with just two minutes five minutes because it now I'm at the point where I like to wake up two hours before I have to leave the house. So that way I have enough time to relax, make a little cup of tea, meditate. Now I get it. Some people are like two hours is a very difficult chunk of time for them to, to take out in the morning. So even if you just start out with two to five minutes waking up a little earlier and doing one thing, just picking one thing, whether that's listening to something motivational in the morning while you're brushing your teeth. Um, hi guys, oh, I see you guys are joining in, that's awesome. So the topic of the Facebook Live is balancing work and free time. So Suzanne um, asked in here, what are top tools, two top tools that have shifted my life? Um, if you guys can type in the comments any any questions you have or just some feedback, some comments. What are things that maybe you do balancing work and your free time? 
Um, some, some other tips that I have, having an evening routine also um, has been really important in balancing work and my free time. I noticed that at the end of the day, sometimes I used to feel like I didn't do anything for the day. I felt like I, I noticed that I had a lack of fulfillment, that feeling of, I feel like I just lived an entire day and I did nothing with myself. Looking back on some of the things, even if it's very small, writing them down, journaling, writing down the things that I accomplished that day really leaves me with a sense of accomplishment when I go to sleep. And I actually sleep better when I, I feel like I'm in a better mood when I go to sleep, when I think about some of the things that I was able to get done. Um, another tip I have, so balancing work and free time. Sometimes people will say, I don't really have any free time, Danny. I feel like I just go, go, go. I'm running on empty. So you know how when you take a look at your bank account and you think about, I don't know where my money goes, and you look at it and you realize maybe we shouldn't be buying Starbucks every day or we shouldn't be buying Dunkin' Donuts every day or we didn't realize that we've been going out so much spending money here and there. Time is very similar to that. Sometimes we think we're so busy, we have no time in the day. And, but if you really were to step back, just the same way that you look at your bank statement or your credit card statement, step back and think about a time statement. And where are you spending that free time or that time? I shouldn't call it free because you don't think it's, you don't think you have any free time. But if you have this feeling of, I don't have any free time, thinking about what are you spending your time doing? And the reason I say that is because, and I'm guilty of this too, I tend to spend time on social media and we think we're only going to spend maybe two to five minutes, but it really goes like this. You look at the time and before you know it, you might have been on social media for 30 minutes or 45 minutes or sometimes more. <laughs> so even though I notice that people tend to feel like I don't have any free time, the same way that you would check your bank statement or your credit card statement to see where your money is going, I invite you to get more present and look at where your time is being spent. Um, thank you guys. I see that people are joining in the Facebook Live. Hi, hi. It doesn't, you know, it's funny. If I do the Facebook Lives on the phone, it gives me the option to wave, but for some reason on the computer, it doesn't give me the option to wave. Um, great. Sharda says, I, I need to really start having a morning routine. Yes, Sharda. Um, awesome. Let's see. Hi, Gabriella. Hey, Hector. Nice to see you guys. Awesome. So we are talking about balancing work and free time. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and type it in the comments. What do you do to balance your work and free time? Um, what are some things that you notice are working? What are some things that you are noticing that's not working? Um, the other thing I want to add is... Let me see here. Boundaries. Boundaries. I know that sounds strange in the context of balancing work and free time, right? This is where boundaries comes in. And we tend to do this, and this is one of the things that I work on with my clients. Saying yes when we mean no, and saying no when we mean yes. I totally am guilty of this as well. I've worked through this. I, it's been a challenge, but I did work through it, and I'm so proud of the progress I've made and where I'm at now. I never realized just how much of a difference it makes when we really say what we mean. Because sometimes we'll, we might commit to something when we really know deep down inside we don't want to, or vice versa. We might not commit to something when we know we really should. So being cognizant of what you're saying yes to and what you're saying no to. I know that in the past, I had a history of being a people pleaser. And I said yes to everyone and to everything when really sometimes I really needed to say no. And I don't know if, if you can relate to that, type it in the comments. Um, and it's not a bad thing. It's, I don't want you to feel I'm embarrassed or ashamed of it. Some of us do that and it's okay because being aware of it is where it starts and that's how we get to work on it, by being aware of it. So if you know that you're a little guilty of that, just put a little emoji in the comments, it's okay. But being aware of it that 
when we say no, no is just as much of an answer as yes. Sometimes we feel uncomfortable saying no because we feel bad, we feel guilty, um, so many different reasons. That, those were some of the reasons that I, I had. So getting introspective and looking at, do you tend to say yes to everything or overcommit? And when we overcommit, we burn ourselves out, we end up feeling really resentful, we feel like we have no time, we feel like we have no time for ourselves and for the things that we want to do and to take care of ourselves. So that's why it's all about, oh, I love what Hector is saying, self-awareness. Yes, self-awareness is so key because then once you're aware, you can start from there. So great, thank you. Yeah, and, and, and go ahead, guys, type in in the comments as you're joining, balancing work and free time, what are some of the things that you do to balance work and free time, or if you have any questions. Um, but yeah, so as I was saying, I noticed that as I started implementing, telling people, no, I'm sorry, you know, I have things on my plate already, or being, and because I said no, I was able to free up space for the things that I did want to do, that I knew in my heart I did want to say yes to. So just a recap, we talked about a lot here um, in what, 10, 15 minutes. So balancing work, the reason I'm looking over is because I, t I will like, I can go off on this for like an hour <laughs> and I, it's a Saturday and I want people to, I want to respect everybody's time. So I made sure I wrote some notes down that way I stayed on topic. Um, oh, I do have one last one, one last one. And this is very important, especially if you watch this and perhaps you're a drinker. Okay. If you're somebody that consumes alcohol and it's to the point where you find yourself hungover, you find yourself blacking out, not remembering things, you know, partying, when I cut that out, I had so much more time. I know it sounds weird, but the time that I, I didn't realize how much time I would devote to my hangovers or to having to try to feel, get myself to feel better. Because usually I would spend whatever times at night and then it ended up being the next morning, it took out my whole day just trying to take care of myself and get myself back to nourishment and feeling better. So once I stop, and this may not apply to everybody watching, but for those of you who are watching and you know that that's a pattern you have, becoming aware of it. Becoming aware of where you're spending your time, like even such as a hangover. That actually does take time out of your schedule. Okay, so now let's recap because I wanted to make sure I had mentioned that. So we talked about for balancing work and time, free time. Schedule. Make sure you have that you're scheduling time for yourself. Even if it's just 30 minutes a week, putting it, if you use your phone calendar, putting it in your phone and putting it in that calendar, 30 minutes on a Saturday or on a Wednesday. And just a little side note of the schedule. I recommend if you are going to put 30 minutes a week or an hour a week, I would recommend doing it. If you're, if you feel like you just have no time, I would really recommend putting it on a Wednesday because halfway through the week, it recharges you to carry on the rest of the week. We talked about a morning routine, having just five, two to five minutes, setting yourself up, whether it's making a cup of tea and just sitting down, meditating, listening to an inspirational video on YouTube, um, praying, going for a little walk, just two to five minutes in the morning, and then an evening routine before you go to sleep, reflecting on the things that you were able to accomplish that day. Boundaries, over committing. Are you over committing? Do you tend to say yes when you mean no or say no when you mean yes? Looking at social media, how much time you're spending on social media. And then the last one, which is may not apply for everybody, but if you tend to be a drinker with hangovers, maybe consider cutting out the drinking. So we talked about six tips today of balancing work and free time. I hope that this has supported you. Um, please feel free to type in the comments if you're watching this as a replay, what are some things that you find that you do that are helpful for balancing work and free time? And also leaving some comments there of 
any tips that you got that were helpful, things that were supportive, some aha moments that maybe that you got from this Facebook Live. Type it in the comments. All right, guys, I hope you have a great Saturday. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you tomorrow on the next Facebook Live.